On the Kuwaiti-Saudi border are lighting up the sky with artillery and rocket attacks. NBC's Arthur Kent is one of the journalists assigned to the network Combat Pools. U.S. Army rocket crews call this steel rain. The Army's multiple launch rocket system hammers down on Iraqi military positions up to 30 kilometers across Saudi Arabia's northern border. Immediately after firing their rockets, these launch vehicles of the 1st Cavalry Division quickly withdraw to reload and strike again. A 12 rocket salvo from just one of these launch vehicles can lay waste to an area the size of two football fields. The rocket crews try to reload as quickly as possible to counter any return Iraqi artillery fire. But so far, the Iraqi gunners have managed to reach only Allied positions further to the front. We're designed to uh, hit deep targets to help prepare the battlefield for the maneuver to come in. Sergeant Bobby Whitten and his crew man launcher 1-1 of Alpha Battery. Do you feel like the pitch of the battle is changing now and there's more focus on you? We started getting involved and it's like, well, this is one step closer to us going home because we're in this war now. So. Their launchers reloaded. Alpha Battery returns to the battlefield, heading north. Onboard computers allow for wind speed and direction, even air temperature, in taking aim at Iraqi targets. Then, the order to fire. Once again, the sky fills with still rain. This attack lasts just 50 seconds. 72 rockets with 644 bomblets per rocket will soon pour down on Iraqi troops and equipment. After suffering the air war, Saddam Hussein's troops now feel something of what a ground war could bring them. Arthur Kent, NBC News, in northeastern Saudi Arabia. All kinds of things going on right here. We have a scuttle alert in uh, Saudi Arabia. We want to go now, however, to Moscow, where we have in Moscow Vitaly Ingdenteko talking about Tariq Aziz and his positive response. Uh, fixed, uh, uh, a fixed time frame for after the withdrawal of two thirds of all the forces, Iraqi forces from Kuwait. The economic sanctions envisaged by the UN will uh, cease to apply to Iraq. After the uh, end of the withdrawal of Iraqi forces from Kuwait, the causes uh, will cease to exist, uh, the causes for the corresponding resolutions of the Security Council, so thus, those resolutions would uh, cease to be in effect. Six. Right after the uh, ceasefire, all the POWs will be immediately released. Seventh. The withdrawal of forces would be monitored by the countries not directly involved in the conflict being so entrusted by the Security Council of the United Nations. And last point, uh, they work on uh, determining the uh, details and specifications uh, continues. The final outcome of this work will be made public today on the 22nd of February till the countries, members, uh, present members of the Security Council of the United Nations. Now we're back here in Saudi Arabia now where we have what we believe is a scud alert underway. The sirens are going off at the big air base near here. We want to go now, however, to Washington and NBC's Fred Francis at the Pentagon who has been listening to that announcement by Vitaly Ignatenko who is a, speak, uh, a spokesman for Mikhail Gorbachev after the meeting with Iraqi Foreign Minister Tariq Aziz. An offer of a phased withdrawal. Fred, is that going to be good enough? No, it's not, Tom. What they have been talking about here at the Pentagon and talking quite seriously is that Iraqi soldiers will have to leave their equipment in place, leave their tanks in place, their artillery and all their APCs, and move north. 
And uh, that was uh, the back channel stuff that has been going to, to the Soviet Union, that uh, a phased withdrawal is in effect a ceasefire. And a ceasefire is, an ab is advantageous to Saddam Hussein. I must tell you, Tom, there's a high confidence here based on intelligence that is gathered from radio intercepts and from POWs that if the president does have to order ground forces into Iraq and Kuwait, it would be a very short war. <clears throat> Today, Defense Secretary Cheney signaled that the ground war could now quickly follow Saddam's refusal to withdraw. Well, we have no choice but to proceed uh, as planned uh, with uh, the military campaign to achieve our objective, to liberate Kuwait. And the decision to send American tanks into Iraq is in part based on the certainty that almost 50% of Iraq's tanks and artillery pieces have been destroyed. And the relentless bombing has produced strong indications that Iraqi morale is terrible. While more than 2,000 Iraqis have surrendered to coalition forces, more than 5,000 others who have been without food and water are fleeing north to Iraq. I think it's safe to say once again that we're getting growing evidence that he's a very unhappy lot. In terms of water, we have some reports, for example, that sometimes it goes as much as four days without uh, potable water, that sometimes are provided salt water to drink. Um, Episodal information like this that leads us to believe that uh, perhaps there is a large number that's going north. <laughs> U.S. intelligence radio intercepts enforce the belief that there will be wholesale surrenders. This Iraqi soldier is crying on a military transmission. A man comforts him saying, don't cry my son, don't cry, God will be on our side. The soldier asks, how will it be okay, and is told again, don't cry. No one is predicting that all of Saddam's soldiers will quit early, but the most optimistic Pentagon insiders, Tom, say that the heavy fighting will end, will end in three days, while the most cautious senior officers think it will last 10 days with light casualties. Tom? All right, thank you very much, Fred Francis. Just to bring you up to date on the situation now, Vitaly Ignatenko, who is the spokesman for Mikhail Gorbachev, the president of the Soviet Union, said tonight, that the Iraqi Foreign Minister, Tariq Aziz, has offered a phased withdrawal, but still with conditions attached. Here in Saudi Arabia, we have the sirens for a scud alert, and we believe that we just heard two explosive sounds. It could be the firing of Patriot missiles. We'll have to wait and see. Certainly, we have not received an all clear yet. The situation here remains, as I, as I said just a few moments ago, an alert sounded, no all clear, two distant booms that could have been the firing of those Patriot missiles that have been so successful in intercepting the Scud. Earlier today, other Scuds were fired up north in Saudi Arabia, uh, closer to the border. They too were intercepted. They did rain down some debris, but it caused no damage whatsoever. That was at about uh, five o'clock this afternoon, uh, Saudi Arabia time. That would have been about nine and a half hours ago now. So Saddam Hussein, after his defiant speech today, saying that he's prepared for the mother of all battles, that he will not surrender, continues to fire the Scuds into the Saudi Arabia theater. No missiles launched tonight, so far as we know, against Israel, and we don't know as yet where these Scuds may have launched here. The Air Force was fairly confident, the Allied Air Force, that it had, in fact, knocked out most of the Scud launchers, although they did concede uh, that they may not have gotten them all. So Saddam Hussein still has some resources left. These Scuds, we were told earlier today, may have been launched from inside the territory of Iraq, not from someplace in Kuwait. And if they are launching them, they may be doing them on their own because there's also some belief that uh, there is no longer command and control to the Iraqi Scud launchers. Still no clear? Oh, well, we await this. We'll tell you. We'll be back with more from Saudi Arabia right after this.